Hello, my friend, and welcome back to my podcast, Challenge Your Norm. Today, we're going to be talking about building self-esteem, which really is all about feeling good within yourself, about yourself. And I think it's such an important topic because our self-esteem is what determines everything in our life. It determines the energy that we put out and the actions that we do and do not take and how others perceive us and who we attract into our life and our relationships in general and just our overall inner happiness and well-being. So I'm excited to jump into this topic because it's something that I personally have been working on lately and it I see improvement within it and the different things that I've been doing that I want to share with you today have really been helping me and um, it's fun. It's fun working on yourself and feeling improvement because you really can see a massive change when you do so. So I'm excited about today, but I just quickly want to give you a little bit of context about what's been going on in my life since we spoke last because I was staying at my friend Jen's house for a week. She was gone and when she came back I moved into my other friend Effie's house here in LA which I love being in her house. It's such a cozy vibe. You know how sometimes when you walk into a home you can just feel the good vibrations and energy and that's what I feel when I'm here. Her roommate is currently gone and in a few weeks then Effie's gonna be gone so I'll have her room to myself until I can move back into my own apartment. If you are new to this podcast I have been living a little bit of a digital nomad life and I rented out my apartment and my car here in LA and recently just decided that I wanted to cut my digital nomad mad life short. I was just ready to get back into LA and my old life and doing the things on a daily basis that brought me joy and also just getting into a little bit more of a daily routine again. And yeah, so I'm I'm just feeling so happy to be back. It just, it feels amazing. And as I have been back, I have gone back into dance class and I have um, decided I want to do modeling again. And those, both of those things, as well as my, just my career in general, I need to continuously build and grow my self-esteem and my confidence. And so I've been really working on that. If you listen to my last podcast, you know that I have this crazy fear of um, dancing in front of a camera, which is just insane because I am 26 years old, almost 27. And I've been dancing pretty much my entire life. And I still have this nagging fear that is like holding me back from um, really just becoming fearless in dance class and just in dancing in general, which it's just a silly fear, but I've actually attacked it this week. And this week, sorry, I'm going completely off topic, but I'm kind of proud of this moment. So let me just share it with you. Um, Sometimes in dance class, the teacher is like, um, one person go, which means that like, You've learned a choreography for an hour and then at the end of the class, a camera comes out and that's where usually my fear comes up. And then uh, usually you get picked sometimes to go into a group and then you dance in front of the camera. And this week, a teacher said, one person go. And so I went and that's not something I've ever done before, which means that like I did a solo in front of the camera, in front of the class. And I, yeah, I've never done that before, but talking about building self-esteem, me doing that made me realize, oh, I actually can do that. And previously, I've just never done it because I've had this fear of messing up and not being able to do it. And I did it and I didn't mess up, which I mean, I could have messed up, but I think because I've been practicing these things that we're going to chat about today, I've kind of like in a good place of building up my confidence. And so I was just like in a, in a good place in my mind. So that was a really good experience. Also, because I feel like if if I have any fear in my life that I do not attack, I do not go after, it's just going to continue haunting me for the rest of my life until I actually get rid of it, right? So we have to face these fears that we are experiencing and feeling. Yeah, I just quickly wanted to share that because it's kind of on topic with today's theme, but let's actually jump into this. I have, I think I have like five different tools that have helped me and hopefully can help you as well in building your self-esteem. And the first one is surprising to me because it's not something I have ever practiced 
therapist, but I've heard so many people talk about it. So it's probably like the most normal one. But to me, this is something I've recently started as in like the last week or two. And it actually has really helped me. I have done this previously a few years ago when I first started wanting to model and I started taking heels class because heels class is a very feminine, sexy vibe. And I wanted to step into that role. And because I'm coming back and doing those things again, it kind of like sparked this need in me in wanting to do that again. So number one is looking good, doing things that make you feel like you are cool, sexy, cute, whatever you value. And for me, that's meant like, um, I, I used to get my nails done, but like me going into a salon and spending, first of all, the time to get there, then usually there's wait time. And then you sit there and (laughs) it takes like an hour to get your nails done. And then you leave and then my nails break off anyway, because I'm such a mess. And so that's just been like something that, Ugh, it's been a something I just haven't prioritized doing. But me getting my nails done actually makes me feel a certain way. It it brings out some sort of femininity in me. It makes me feel a little bit more glamorous. Interesting choice of word, but it, that is actually how it makes me feel. And so what I've chosen to do instead of going into the salon and spending maybe two hours every week or two, my nails are like super oily. So my, it's like nails don't last longer than a week and then one falls off and then it's like, you kind of got to go in and get it checked and stuff. So my solution to this problem is going back to fifth grade where I used to buy the nails that you buy in a box and then there's glue and you kind of just like glue them on and they pretty much last as long as when I get acrylic nails or something like that. So So that's something I started doing and it's making, it's like I said, it's making me feel a little glamorous. Something else I've done is I've started putting on makeup and that makes me feel really good. Usually I would just put on makeup if I had to um, shoot something specific or I had to, you know, I don't know if there was a specific reason, but now I like will put makeup on to go to a dance class or just like to go out. Sometimes I've even put on mascara before going to the gym because it makes a difference, I've realized. And I am, when it comes to like my aesthetics, like clothing, makeup, nails, I'm I'm lazy with that. Like that's not something that comes naturally. Like skincare is not really an existing thing in my life. Like I'm not good with those things. I would say I'm I'm very good at other things, but that's just not my 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 best quality but started putting on makeup and I started like dressing up and making sure for example before I go to a dance class that I'm wearing something that makes me feel cool or makes me feel you know whatever vibe that specific class is that I'm going to or if I'm going to the gym that I don't just wear like an oversized t-shirt like I wear something that makes me feel good and and it does make a difference and I mean you guys listening you probably are way better than me at doing this I just wanted to share it with you if you are someone like me who is a little bit lazy in getting ready for the day and dressing up and making yourself feel good on the outside so that it can affect your inside. I don't know the studies on this, but I'm sure there are some studies that have proven that this kind of works. Oh, actually, I do know the studies because, oh, I guess we can jump into the next one, which is that I'm reading a book called The Alter Ego Effect. Highly, highly recommend that you check it out if you are someone pursuing something, but you find that fear or something is holding you back, highly, highly recommend it. I was talking about it in the YouTube video that is coming out as well. I don't know if this will come out or the YouTube video will come out first, but I'm talking about it there too. It's basically, you know how Beyonce has an alter ego called Sasha Fierce because Beyonce on stage is not who she is in real life. And so she steps into this role to become this, I mean, I don't even know how to describe Beyonce, but we all know she is phenomenally incredible at what she does. And so she steps into this alter ego so that she can perform in the absolute best 
most powerful way. And a lot of athletes use this. People who are challenged when they have to write, but they're a writer, if they then put on their glasses, then they it helps them step into this role. And what I've done is I've actually created a persona, my alter ego. You can read the book if you want to go into this, but like her whole backstory. So I'm, I'm, a, I would say I'm, I'm in, in certain areas of my life, I'm, I'm fearful or I'm insecure. And this person, she just does not give a fuck. And she is just like, does not care. I like, I always have cared about what other people think and, and other people come before me. And like, that's kind of like who I am as a person when I'm with people. And this person is just like, I don't give a fuck. Like I have to fucking do this because I have no other choice. I'm so sorry. I'm swearing so much, but that is just my alter ego coming through. <laughs> and I have used this alter ego in dance classes because that's like my, my, um, something that I'm trying to develop right now, as I was chatting about and using her using my alter ego, it's still a challenge for me to step into it. Like sometimes I'll step into it, but then um, Pernella will come up, like my, my own self will come up and then the fear will come up, but then I can like, she'll be like, move, like you're not, you're not allowed here. And then I'll like step back into the alter ego. It, it's still something I'm practicing, but it really, really helps. And I want to say that this is useful when it comes to building self-esteem because when you practice something like this enough where you step into this role of someone else who is able to do that thing, like think of someone who would be phenomenal at that thing that you are struggling with right now. If you can think of someone else and then step into those shoes and you may have to brainstorm on this, like maybe not the per perfect person doesn't come right away. Like maybe it could be Oprah, Superman, Elon Musk, like you know, depending on what it is that you're trying to work on, like think of different people, maybe brainstorm on it and then find the right person, or you can create your own person. Maybe it's an animal. He talks about this in the book. But if you step into the role of this person who could do that thing that you're trying to do very, very well, then if you do that enough, eventually you have seen yourself doing that for so long that it eventually becomes a part of you to also do that thing because you've proven to yourself that you are capable because you are capable when you step into this role of doing this thing that you have been dealing and struggling with for so long, but that when you step into this role, then you can do it. And then you realize that you actually can as you as well. So highly recommend that you try that out. The third one that I want to chat about that is kind of in that same realm is that to build self-esteem, you have to challenge yourself. You have to go and follow the things that you are fearful of. That I believe that's like the thing that I've done the most throughout the last maybe five years to build my self-esteem is to do the things that I am avoiding, the things that I'm fearful of, the things that I don't actually feel like doing. When I see myself do those things, I gain such belief and love and um, just self-esteem, confidence within myself that I am capable and worthy of doing these things. That, I believe, is the best, quickest, most efficient way for you to build your self-esteem. If you take a piece of paper right now and write down 10 things that you are fearful of, pick one, pick the easiest one maybe, and go do that today. If you see yourself do that, you're going to feel so proud of yourself. And you feeling proud of yourself, I think, is, is like the key, the trick to starting to build that self-esteem. And the more that you do those things that are challenging yourself, the more that you see yourself pushing yourself and leveling up and being worthy and capable of doing these things, the more self-belief and self-esteem you're going to gain because you're just going to experience and see your inner power and your beauty and your strength. And that really is self-esteem, right? When you can see all of the incredible things that you are, instead of focusing on all the things that you lack or that you're not good at or that you can't do because of this and that. So th I'm keeping this one short because it's simple. It's easy. I mean, it's not easy, but it's, it's very straightforward. Write a list of 10 things that you are scared of and attack one of them 
today. If it's late at night while you're listening to this, make a plan to do it tomorrow, obviously. I don't want you to miss out on your good, beautiful night's sleep, but that really is... I would say the number one key to building self-esteem, at least it has been for me. I'm sure some of the experts would say otherwise, but yeah. And with that, let's move on to the next, because that is self-talk. But really what it involves is like affirmations and vision boards and journaling and really just hyping yourself up. Like every time you catch yourself saying something negative about yourself, like really be cautious and change it. You may even want to write it down on a piece of paper. The three things, you could start with three things that you tell yourself that you lack, that you're not good at, that you can't do, that you give yourself shit for. Like stop that, first of all. But second of all, write those down and then change them into something positive. If you've been telling yourself that you are not capable of pulling through and doing the work whenever you've set yourself a goal, if you've been telling yourself that you're not good at that, make an affirmation that I always follow through and take massive action when I have a goal or whatever, something that feels right to you so that you can start to shift that within yourself. And it's not that I think that words are going to change it necessarily, but I do think that when you say that to yourself daily, so when you've made those three things, make sure that you say it to yourself daily, look yourself right in the eyes in the mirror, and then say it to yourself every day. I would even say it like five times a day. Maybe like you could make it a rule every time you go to the bathroom, you just quickly say those three sentences or something like that. And I don't think that that necessarily is going to change you, but in a sense it will, because when you keep saying that to yourself, your mind is slowly going to start believing it. And when your mind slowly starts believing it, then you're going to take the action steps towards that thing. And you may get excited about this. And the first day you do it five times, the second day you maybe do it three times, and the third day you do it one, and then the fourth you're off. So sometimes something like this, like you have to really be on it. And that's why I mentioned vision board, because if you have a visual that can remind you daily, maybe it's your screensaver on your phone or a quote on your mirror, whatever, then I think it's more likely that you're actually going to step up and do the thing. And because it's something like this to completely transform your subconscious mind that has an ingrained belief about yourself, like it, you need to be consistent and steady with it. But this is something I've done many times throughout my life whenever I've wanted to work on different things. And I really do think that this has helped build my self-esteem because when obviously when we change our subconscious mind from something negative to something positive, we're going to build more love for ourselves and belief in ourselves and all these things that are so important in this life. It's so sad when we're not good and nice to ourselves. Like, why would we want to do that? But really, it comes down to the fact that when we were children, then maybe our parents told us things. We went through experiences that made us believe certain things about ourselves. And when we grow up, we continue to say these things to ourselves, have this narrative about ourselves, unless we choose to consciously make a change. And we freaking deserve that. Like that is why I'm so obsessed with self-development because it has changed my entire belief about myself. And that in itself has changed my life. And everything that I have in my life today is a product of me building that self-esteem. And I am nowhere near the end. (laughs) Like I have a long way to go, but it really, really is. It's just so powerful. And I want everyone, I want us all to do that because it's just, it's beautiful when we start believing in ourselves and seeing what a change it makes in our outer world. And even like seeing how other people around us change because really the people around us are a perception of our perspective of the world. So when we change everyone around us and all our situations and experiences and everything just changes. So it's just important. I think it's important. I just want to quickly talk about one thing that isn't really building self-esteem. I don't know if it is, but I'm going to share it anyway. And I think I've shared it before, but it's such a powerful thing and I've done it for years. Um, I'll do it every now and then. Sometimes I'll do it often. Sometimes, you know, a month will go by and then I'll do it again. But 
it is journaling about your future life. Like I will journal on from when I wake up in the morning to like go to bed, like the perfect day, what that looks like, what house I live in, how I wake up, who I'm with, how I go to work, what I eat, like everything in detail, what my dream life looks like. And it can be in three months from now, a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, like whatever you feel excites you. And I change that up as well. And I think that this does help. And the reason I want to talk about that when it comes to this building self-esteem is because I think that subconsciously things happen, we take action towards that future. If we really have created and build up this visual in our mind on what our future looks like and I also think that it just, or for me at least, it makes me feel really good about myself because I'm like, oh wow, well, if that's my future, I'm a worrier. <laughs> like, I worry a lot, not a warrior. I hope, I, I mean, I hope I'm a warrior too, but I am a worrier. Like, I worry about things. And when I do this exercise, it's like, oh, I'm going to be fine. If this is my future, I will be fine. And that just in itself makes me feel good within about myself because it makes me feel safe that it's all going to be okay. And it obviously, whenever I've like created a bigger and brighter future, when I journal in the beginning, it can feel challenging to even believe that that's a possibility. But when I do it, the same visual long enough, write it down more and more, the more naturally feels to me that that is obviously my future. And that just makes me feel good within myself, which I think also plays a role in my self-esteem and the action steps I take and all of that that we've chatted about in this episode. So just wanted to put that out there in case you're looking for a little journaling exercise and you have been wanting to build your self-esteem. I kind of went a little bit all over the place, but my hope is that something I said, just maybe one thing I said in this episode, sparked something within you and you were like, okay, yes, I'm going to do this for the next seven or 30 days, whatever. I hope you just just pick one thing because if we have too many things, it's easier to fall off track. But if we just focus on one thing that we feel could be a good use of our time to build our self-esteem and change our lives at the same time then i think that then i would it would just make me really happy and if you think that someone you know could find this episode useful i hope that you want to share it and also it helps me out so much if you would subscribe that just supports a podcast host so i would really really appreciate it and i hope you go out there and do something to build your self-esteem and remember that in order for you to grow, you've got to challenge your norm.